Good evening everyone, time for another Bitcoin report. This is the daily chart provided by netdania.com. You can click on the link below of Priceline.com. This is one of the stocks that I'm short a small amount of in my brokerage account. And uh, the reason I'm bringing this up is that uh, uh, we're going to talk about the Bitcoin bottleneck and we're going to talk about real markets and fake markets. Now, this I propose is actually a fake market here. Now, one of the things that is a big tell that you can see, uh, this is the Obama bottom roughly around March of 2009 when the Fed started printing money hand over fist. And then you can see the volume which has steadily decreased until we're down to roughly the fall of last year into the election then a little bit mainly into this year. You can see the retail that's mom and pop that's people buying stocks pretty much out of the market there's there's no volume uh, this is in my opinion a fake market uh, the stock market is in my opinion the government trading with the government and uh, I'm gonna show you a little bit of the reason why I say that this is something you're gonna have to investigate on your own this is the CAFR the comprehensive annual financial report uh, this uh, story is uh, was broken by Walter Burian. You can see he's linked at the bottom of this Wikipedia. There's a couple of his videos. There's The Biggest Game in Town, his 2000 documentary, and The Only Game in Town, his 2010 documentary. So you click on that and watch that. But just to summarize, basically, uh, when you look into the government pension funds, and uh, the retirements of the various local, uh, county, uh, state, federal, agency, uh, all these governments, uh, you find out that you have trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars invested into stocks. And uh, the Plunge Protection Team, that's the working group uh, of financial, on financial markets, uh, that's an open secret, is in my opinion propping up the stock market. So this is a picture of a fake market. Uh, why do they have to keep this market up like this? Because they have to maintain confidence. And if it came out that retails completely out of the stock market and the stock market is really just the government trading with the government, then of course, uh, who are they going to sell to? Well, nobody. So uh, in my opinion, that is going to end in a catastrophic collapse uh, in the stock market. Of course, the bond market as well. Now, the latest FUD that we've got from Chris Duane is uh, this uh, Bitcoin exchange scammer. Now, uh, I'm going to read some of this, but this is a confession supposedly from a guy who's a, a, a Bitcoin ex scammer. And uh, he said his, his opinion, I've said it before, I'll say it again. There are three main users of Bitcoin, uh, money cleaners, tax evaders, those involved in non-legal activities and the greedy. So we pretty much know where this guy's coming from from the start. But what's interesting is uh, it's interesting that Chris Duane finds a need to dig up old FUD. And so all I did was I went to Google and I did a search on this URL. This, of course, he's mentioned that he's uh, brought this back up. After considerable thought, I've decided to put the Bitcoin Exchange scammer comment back up. So if you search for that, you can find here, you can do an exact search for that URL. And there's, a, here we go, June 3rd, 2011. And there's the URL, okay. So you can see this is really old, old FUD, almost two years old. Uh, what was the price of the Bitcoin June 3rd, 2011? I think that was the beginning of the run on the way up to 30. Supposedly it was a pump and dump and of course uh, then it pumped higher. How many pump and dumps have you seen that uh, dumped and then went higher? Maybe Priceline or RIM or something like that. I haven't seen too many of them but anyway so the allegations in this are that well let's read this. After considerable thought I've decided to put the Bitcoin exchange scammer comment back up as I believe it's in the public interest especially so given recent events on Bitcoin exchanges and we know that around this time Mt. Gox was hacked. For those unaware every now and then I receive a comment through the wonderfully inefficient 
nerder.com spam filter from someone who couldn't quite find my email address that's fine most of the times it's small fire that's quickly put out or startup proposal consider all good fun yesterday was a little different I came across a message that sent a shiver down my spine oh no as much as I've discussed the pros and cons of Bitcoin I never once realized that this could be happening it was a comment intended for the Bitcoin shutdown article and originated from what appeared to be an actual Bitcoin trading exchange owner. Now I take this with a grain of salt, heck a sack of it judging by some of the comments left here last week, but it seems like the real deal from what I could dig up. I've removed the Bitcoin exchange name for obvious reasons, cleaned up the grammar and spelling the best I could. Hi Nerder, I could not find an email address to contact you and have some information for you. Let me first say who this message is from. I own and run a Bitcoin trading exchange. Here, many users buy Bitcoins and sell Bitcoins for dollars. As you know, it's been a great time for Bitcoin trading with large rise in the value over a very short period of time. First, I started like the others. I wanted to trade the Bitcoins for dollars on the Bitcoin forum like others. And I started my own Bitcoin website to do this. Some people from Bitcoin forum used it and were happy. Some told their friends and so on and so on. It grew like a mushroom. I want to say again, first, it was all good and clean, no mess, very honest. Then I had my big idea. I wanted to make more money. The number on the exchange, a number. I could change it in the programming. So right away this guy's admitting that he's a crook. Not too much because there are other exchanges to balance. That's called arbitrage. And I'm going to show you here that uh, arbitrage is already fully in force. And uh, this whole thing is uh, a bogus argument. Anyway, but a little would be okay to do so I did it I increased the Bitcoin value a little say from a dollar to a dollar five. Oh, so we now have Bitcoin trading at ninety dollars and he was playing with dollar and dollar five obviously this was at a point where there was a very very illiquid market so this is old FUD nonsense ridiculous and if this is the best the FUDsters have um, I guess all I can say is keep digging um, so let's go and look at Clark Moody and I want to examine this market a little bit in depth to show you some things now if you remember uh, first of all let me show you how the uh, controls work on this oh, let me shrink it down uh, these controls here you can check and uncheck this box and what we want to do is we want to group by price and uh, we want to jam them up together so we can get a good idea of the uh, bids and asks and, uh, and then you can do the rows to display. You can see we're pushing 90. If you remember my prediction, I predicted that once we got through 50, and let's pull out so we can see that. My prediction was that once the price of Bitcoin got through 50, that we would get a run straight to 100. We pretty much done that. You can see we had that pullback, but uh, we recovered very quickly. We're running to 100. Will we go through 100? We could. We could slice through 100 like a knife through butter and go to two or three or 400 uh, before we correct. My prediction, just based on some old school technical analysis, was that we would get a correction back to 50 after that run to 100. But you can see we ran to 75 and corrected nearly back already with tremendous buying coming in. So sometimes uh, these bull markets, they just run away from you. And that's what we're going to see when we look at the actual numbers of the buying and selling. So I showed you the way that you uh, set these. I set it at to display a thousand rows and then group them by a price of five. And the reason I'm doing that, I'll show you down below here. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is I want to show you the depth of the market. Now, uh, the groups of uh, five dollar prices you can see here the bids 8897 and and 88999 uh, the first thing you notice is that's a pretty tight market uh, that's a very tight spread and uh, that's the first thing you look for when you're looking to determine liquidity you want to see how tight the spread is uh, common investment advice whether you're talking about gold silver jewelry something on the pawn stars doesn't really matter uh, you walk up to the guy at the counter and tell him I've got a 1995 Silver Eagle uh, what will you pay me for it uh, okay uh, do you have one for sale yeah I do what what can I buy it for that's the spread the difference between the buy and the sell 
Uh, the stock market, of course, is the most liquid. Uh, we're talking pennies, but you can see here the liquidity on the Bitcoin is getting very, very tight. And I'll show you that's because we're rising. We're actually, the buying pressure is rising into the cells and uh, we're pushing through that 90 price. But that's liquidity. That's very important. That's one way of establishing that you have a legitimate market. And I've shown you before how to arbitrage these markets. This is just the Mt. Gox feed. Mt. Gox is just one exchange that is uh, AML, uh, know your customer compliant, according to FinCEN. So uh, primarily taking deposits in dollars, but they may, I don't know, they may take deposits in euros and other currencies. There are other exchanges that have rubles. Uh, I don't even know how many exchanges there are. There are tons of them. But the way you can determine them is by looking at the liquidity. And you can see how tight the bid and the ask is. Now let's get down and look at some of these numbers. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about Max Kaiser. Now, if you remember that Max Kaiser talked about the fact that he was a Bitcoin millionaire, I don't know when Max got his Bitcoins, but I know that Max got his Bitcoins very early because he's been talking about it for quite some time. Now, I believe that the Bitcoin price was around 50. I may be wrong. It may have been earlier when he said that. It may have been around 30. But let's just, uh, for sake of argument, say it was 50. So at that price, Max would have had to have 20,000 Bitcoins. So uh, under that assumption, let's say that this is a pump and dump and Max is waiting here at uh, some price to dump those Bitcoins. Uh, again, uh, this theory that the Bitcoin is a pump and dump, of course, is a bogus argument from the beginning because there's no way to pump it. Uh, the early adopters have Bitcoin. They don't have dollars. In fact, these are mostly very poor people. So the only way for them to have the dollars to pump the price of Bitcoin would be to sell their Bitcoins to get those dollars. Then, of course, that would defeat the whole purpose. So the whole accusation that Bitcoin is a pump and dump is patently ridiculous and absurd on its face. But let me show you the numbers to prove that to you. So I said that uh, this sum here, uh, let me explain to you how this sum column works. Basically, you add up the total Bitcoins up to that point. So if we go up to a price of 125 on the Bitcoin, we know we have about 30,000 coins offered from that price and below. If we go down to the very, very bottom, and of course on the ask, it's going to be a lot longer than the bid because it only goes to zero. But if we go to the ask, and of course there's somebody at infinity here, but our number, our total number is going to be 49,000. So we're just going to call it 50,000. So if Max's Bitcoins are somewhere on here, and uh, I doubt if any of them are on here, but if they are on here, then he's got about 20,000 of these. He's got almost half that are up for sale here. But you want to watch this last number. This is going to change as the book is added to. Uh, if this number is growing, that means that more and more Bitcoins are being added to the exchange to be sold at any price between uh, what the highest bid is and this price the highest ask which is you know infinity so watch that number is that number going up or down then the other number you want to watch is the sum of the bids now of course you don't want to look at this zero take out the number between zero and five because uh, that's just people saying if it ever goes to zero again like the flash crash that I caught of course all those trades were reversed those weren't real trades but there are people hoping that if the Bitcoin does flash crash to a penny again they'll be able to scoop up a bajillion bitcoins at a penny it's let me tell you it's not gonna happen so we're gonna disregard those and we're just gonna count these here uh, starting at five we have bids for roughly 248,000 bitcoins but of course those are very very low prices so let's not look at those let's look up here at 50 which is the recent uh, breakout point that I predicted we would break through and run to 100 and then that we would correct back to now very interesting observation about this 50 level here is you can see the sum at 50 is 97,000 bitcoins so there are dollars bidding for bitcoins at 50 and above there are at least 97,000 bitcoins bid for at $50 and above. So let's take a look at the offer here and see how many are for sale. How high of a price do we have to go before we find those 100,000 bitcoins at 50 and above or 105,000 at 45 and above? Well, we have to go all the way down to, well, uh, we don't have them. We have a total of 49,000, about 50,000. So even if we threw in Max Kaiser's 20,000 and got to 70,000 here, you can see that 
even at the price of 50 and above, we have twice the number of buyers who want Bitcoins than sellers who have Bitcoins. So this is what I'm going to call the Bitcoin bottleneck. Now, it's really just a simple matter of mathematics. Uh, the Bitcoin has been tested, as I've said before, over the course of the last two and three years. No one has been able to break the protocol. Uh, like I said, they've done everything they possibly can, including enormous amounts of FUD. And uh, it has just not succeeded. The Bitcoin price is going crazy. Part of that is the uh, admission by the central banksters that run Europe and America and pretty much the rest of the world that they're basically just a bunch of criminals and that they're going to take your money. And it's just a matter of time until they steal all your money. So that is the sort of thing that causes a panic rush out of worthless paper currencies that are going to zero and into things like bitcoins, also things like gold, silver, bullets, basically anything that isn't a paper currency. And uh, that in some circles is referred to as a crack up boom. Uh, that's when people realize that they had better trade their dollars for something of value very quick or their dollars are going to be worthless. So even with Max Kaiser's Bitcoins, on this exchange we can see that there is a tremendous Bitcoin bottleneck if you just do the numbers in your head it's real simple there's really only about 10 million bitcoins out there we have about six seven billion people in the world so you do the math uh, there aren't enough bitcoins for everybody in the world to have one in fact there's only enough bitcoins in the world for 10 million people to have one each and uh, we got probably got people like Max Kaiser with 20,000. Uh, we've got a lot of wallets that are locked up. People who we've got lost wallets. Uh, people would say, well, that that could never happen. Well, it happens every day. How often do you hear about somebody who had a 10 or 20 or 50 or 100 million dollar lottery ticket that expired and the government kept the money? So it does happen. Uh, if a wallet is lost or destroyed, then uh, the remaining Bitcoins in the system gain that much value because uh, they're just worth that much more. Again, uh, I misspoke in my last video saying that the Satoshi was the bit cent, one one hundredth of a Bitcoin. Actually, I, I guess I was corrected. The Satoshi is the smallest denomination, which is out eight digits. Is it possible that things will buy and trade for 10 or 20 Satoshis? Yes, in my opinion, it's quite possible. Max Kaiser actually might be correct. I guess if Max Kaiser is correct, then Max Kaiser actually will probably be a Bitcoin billionaire. And we'll talk to you next time.